saw James Bundle sing the Cloncurry cattle song, but because so many of our viewers wanted to know more about Jim, James, after his last appearance, we've invited him back to have a chat with us. So please welcome back to the show, James Bundle. Well, uh, you know why Harvey played that. <laughs> He's a terrible man, isn't he? We'll, no we'll tell the folks later. Uh, I should have mentioned as well, Mark uh, Collins on banjo playing there with you uh, is just fantastic. Thank you, Mark. Thanks, Ray. Mark has played on the show before uh, with us as well. He, what, did you, was it last year you won the Rocky Mountains uh, yeah, Championship? Yeah, last year, last June. For playing the banjo. Is that That's right. Twice in a row, or is that the... Two years in a row, yeah. yeah. So yeah against Colorado. the best banjo players from all around the world, he won that one. So uh, he's not just a banjo player. <laughs> he's a banjo player. <laughs> Now to the singer. The, the, the Clon Curry song obviously has a... You, did you write that? Actually, the words were written by a girl called Margaret Hickson who lives at Clon Curry in North Queensland. I was up there working in 1984 and they had the bicentennial and I'd been playing and singing a bit around and people said, look, you, you better come and write this song. And I said, I don't like to write topical songs about something I don't, I don't know anything about. You know? So Margaret wrote it as a poem and then just said, we'd like to use this, so we then put it to music. And uh, another song won the competition, but we had to... That was sort of recognised as the one that... <laughs> that, that people like because it was very, very apt. It was very good about the place. Yes, that and the the hat is uh, is this is for real. <laughs> <laughs> this one is not for real. A, I had a beautiful old hat that the uh, that was my work hat for eighteen months, and um, actually after your last show, I, a couple of fellows said, "Look, if you're going to get your head on that show, you don't want to have that dirty thing that looks like you've been doing grease and oil changes and sort of." So um, Powers the Beat said, new hat. So new hat was the order of the day. A new hat. <laughs> Colour-coordinated hat, eh? That's right. A, 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 a cattle man hates a new hat. You've got to wear yeah. it, you know. Really? Slim Dusty's got a great song about them. One of his lines is, you jump on it and you belt it around until finally it's you and that's dead right. <laughs> <laughs> Needs a proper caning, this one, before it's any good. <laughs> What's your background then, Jim? I mean, background up until uh, seven, eight months ago, I've been chasing cows and sheep sort of most of my life. Family have a, a station just over the border in southeastern Queensland. And... I grew up there and went to boarding school in grade five and stayed at boarding school until senior. And then went home and at the age of 17 was telling Dad how to run the place, which he sort of took exception to a bit. So he <laughs> sent me down to Victoria to get straightened out and I spent 12 months down there. But always in the bush? Yeah, always in the bush, yeah. And uh, then went up and worked for a very great friend who's actually here today um, in the Gulf of Carpentaria, which was a lot of fun. Then over As the a stockman, were you? Yeah, chasing cows up there and then over to the Kimberleys in Western Australia for an eight-month season chasing wild cattle because there's a big difference between tame cows and ones that want to eat you. <laughs> so we went over learning about those and then accepted a job managing the livestock part of a, a mixed cropping and livestock venture in, in New Guinea, Papua New Guinea, and was up there hoping to make a sort of a three-year sort of tour up there um, of, du you know, of duty, so right. to speak and got mucked up, I came down with a very bad back problem and had to come back and terminate my career up there, and so I started singing. Hence the singing, but the, the back problem again was, uh, was what, trying to rope a, a cow? Basically, uh, it started in 1985 when I was in the Kimberleys, and I'd always wanted to do a bit of rough riding, but um, mum and dad were a bit sort of close handy, and I wasn't allowed to get on the things I wanted to get on, so when I got to the other side of the country, you did I it. started doing that, <laughs> <laughs> and they couldn't see. But that, wound, that put me in traction in Broome for about four days at the end of that season then came over and got fixed up in Sydney and then went up to New Guinea and sort of had seven months with no trouble at all and then had a sort of pretty big relapse. So. What, what about the music? What about the music though? I mean, when did you, had you been singing out there, singing to the cattle or singing always, on your own? Always had a guitar. The, the rest of the camp used to bitch like anything because I'd always have to put this guitar somewhere, you know. <laughs> They'd be trying to load swags and food and the important things and I'd say, can I put this guitar somewhere? But always had it just for fun, but never in a, in a serious sense um, until I had to come to Sydney and they said no riding and no heavy lifting for 12 months. So the obvious thing was to pick up a guitar and have a go at it. Is it still fun? Oh, I love it. I really do, yeah. In a sense, it's a career now for you, though. Well, it's funny because I suppose it really is now. Um, it's, I still really haven't got used to the fact that it's a, it is a full-time thing. But then I look at it and you're sort of singing seven nights a week, so it's got to be pretty close to full-time one way or the other. <laughs> and, uh, what would your mates say, the, the guys that you were working the cattle with now. I'm the idea that you're, a, I hate to say singing cowboy, but, uh, but that's what you are. Look, I, I rebelled. I thought, God, none of them are going to talk to me. They're going to think I'm, I'm nuts, you know, I haven't got the guts to stay in the bush sort of thing, blah, blah, blah. But they've been terrifically supportive, all fascinated. Actually, the first time uh, last month when I appeared on the show, they said, what are you doing on television? <laughs> Not eligible to be there, but uh, it's, they're great. The support's been superb from both friends and family. Up to now, you've written most, uh, most of your own stuff, or do you, do you sing other people's stuff? I do. When I'm uh, doing the 
the tours that I do in Sydney or the, the spots in Sydney, I do nearly all covers, you know, because you've got to, again, you're there as an entertainer, you're not there to be sort of James Brundle particularly, they, they get someone in and... Uh, so you've got to sing something that they, they Enjoy. know. Enjoy, yeah, and it's yeah. a bit hard. You can't really hit them with whole heaps of, of originals because often the commenters be say, play something that we know. Yeah. So uh, it's basically a bit of cowardice on my behalf that I play a lot of other people's songs. But I do write uh, quite a lot of my own music, which we're now starting to do something with, which is a lot of fun. What's been the reaction? I'm, I don't mean to embarrass you, but we had a, an extraordinary response to the time you are on the other day and uh, of people right around the country saying, you know, who is he and can we have him again? Have you had that yourself? Now that you've, you, as you say, you're singing seven days a week... Uh, are you surprised by people's reaction? Very, as a rule. Uh, it's, you, you know that you're having a fun night. I mean, you can get to the stage where I probably have one, one bracket of old sort of rock and roll, the Beatles, and you, you get, get people dancing, and that sort of takes you a bit by storm because, I mean, you're playing it because you enjoy it. And all of a sudden, these people are jumping up and down. But the fact that people want you back always sort of a bit surprises me, you know, because, I mean, I very often think of going to, to play at a place, and that's great. But when they do particularly ask for you again, it's a great thrill. It makes you feel terrific. Do you miss the bush? Do you miss the cattle? Terribly, all the time, yeah. Do you uh, see, see yourself giving it away, if, uh, giving the music away if the back clears up? No, not now, because uh, the, the reaction to the music has been so positive. And I firmly believe if you present it with an opportunity and you don't take it, well, you don't deserve to get anywhere, and this one's here now. So uh, as far as family are concerned, Dad's in full support and said, you know, go for your life and see what you can make happen there. How but, old are you now, James? Uh, 22. And uh, you're about to get married. That's right, on Friday. <laughs> that was the... Uh... <laughs> that, was... That's... that was obviously why Jeff played the music. But uh, you've, you've written a love song for Louise. I have, actually. Can, yeah. you, can you give us a bit I'd of it? She's in the it. studio too somewhere, isn't That's she? right. Can't escape, Louise. <laughs> <laughs> Just give us a little of it. Written from the Kimberleys in Western Australia. <laughs> If you were to leave me now, my life would change in a day, and it's true. I've done a lot of loving, but never the same way that I am in love with you. The way that I lost you, and then now I found you, proves that miracles can happen sometimes. To be without you now, I know what it is to have you Would be too much for my simple mind Cause it's the way that you smile that makes me happy The way that you move that makes me go It's the way I can trust you when I am not around you In case you don't know it, girl, I love you so It's all like that, then, is it? Terrific. Are you going to sing that at the wedding? I don't, I'm not singing anything at the wedding. I'm having a day off. You're not singing at the wedding. All right. Well, the wedding's on Saturday. Uh, Friday. Friday. That's right. Very best of luck. Congratulations. Thanks for coming to uh, talk to us again at Sync us and uh, have a great honeymoon. We'll see you uh, hopefully shortly after the honeymoon. My pleasure and thank you very much thank for you, having Jane. me. Congratulations. Thank Please you. stay.